Thanks everybody for joining us. This is Clearblade's Clear Lab series, session nine, entitled Relay Topics. My name is Akash Sharma. I'm an IoT solutions engineer with Clearblade. We're a company that helps developers build IoT solutions. The system that we've been building over the last several sessions has a portion that runs in the cloud. We call that the platform. And it has portions that run on gateway devices like Raspberry Pis. We call those edges. Those edges are made up of two pieces of software. One is the Clearblade Edge, and another one is an adapter written in some common programming language that interfaces with the Clearblade Edge. For our purposes, so far we've been using an adapter built in Python, and it interfaces to the Clearblade Edge using MQTT. We've had this Python adapter publishing data to an MQTT topic that's hosted on an MQTT broker on the edge. On the same edge, we have had a stream service subscribing to the same topic so that as the Python adapter publishes the data, the stream service receives that data. It writes the data to a collection on the edge. The collection is synced up to a collection in the platform. In the platform, we've had an internal resource running that queries the collection in the platform, uses the queried data as the data source for a widget in our portal, and that's how we've been displaying the data in the portal. So you can see the direction in which data is flowing is from the edge to the platform via the synced collections. But what if we wanted to send data from the platform to one or more edges? Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. And one way we can do that is by using the MQTT broker in the platform. Several sessions back, we actually used the MQTT broker in the platform briefly, but since then we've really focused on using the MQTT broker on the edge. Now, once we have clients connected to the MQTT broker in the platform, those clients can send messages to clients connected to the edge MQTT brokers, and then we can achieve what we want. So here are some things to keep in mind. Within a Clearblade system, you will have an MQTT broker in the platform and you will have one MQTT broker per edge. If you've got MQTT clients connected to a single broker, several connected to the platform broker, let's say, or several connected to the edge broker, one of the edge brokers, they can communicate with each other by subscribing to and publishing to normally named topics. But, if you have a client connected to one broker and it wants to talk to a client connected to another broker all within the same system, that is a requirement. They do have to be within one Clearblade system. They can talk to each other, but they use what we call relay topics. And what makes relay topics unique is how they are named. Now, if you go to our docs page, docs.clearblade.com, and you search for the search term relay, you'll come across this table. And this table tells you how these topics are named. If you have a client connected to an MQTT broker on one of the edges and it wants to send messages to a client connected to the MQTT broker in the platform, then the topic needs to be named with the ending being forward slash underscore platform. That keyword is very important. Now, if you have a client connected to the MQTT broker in the platform and it wants to send data to a particular client on a particular edge. So a client connected to the MQTT broker on one of the edges, then the topic needs to be named as follows. It needs to be uh, terminated with a forward slash underscore edge forward slash and the name of the specific edge to which the message is going. And the same naming approach applies if you've got a client connected to a broker on one edge, wanting to send messages to a client connected to a broker on a different edge, the uh, name of the topic would be forward slash underscore edge forward slash and the name of the edge, which is the recipient of the message. Now, if you've got a client connected to one of the several brokers that wants to send a message that needs to be received by clients connected to multiple brokers, all again within one Clearblade system. Then the topic is a broadcast topic and it is named with a forward slash underscore broadcast at the end. Of course, it is important 
that the clients that want to receive the message do subscribe to this topic uh, to receive the message. And then finally, if there is a client connected to the broker on one edge, wanting to send a message to a client connected to the broker in the platform and a client or clients connected to uh, the broker on a different edge, then the topic uh, is named as follows, forward slash underscore edge and platform, forward slash, and the name of the edge, uh, the one edge where the uh, client is that needs to receive the message. And of course, clients connected to the platform will receive the message as well. Now, once you know all of this, uh, we can perform uh, the tasks for today. So today we're going to take our Python adapter, the temperature adapter, and modify it uh, to subscribe to a platform to edge topic. This platform to edge topic will ask the adapter to return either raw or smoothed data. Now you'll recall that the Python code already has within it the ability to perform a moving average on the temperature data, and we can have it return either the raw data or the averaged or smooth data, and it will do one or the other based on the messages from this platform to edge topic. The code is already built to subscribe to a topic where the request can come in, but you'll see that that topic until now has been one that's a normally named topic because this Python code originally would was um, subscribing or, or was connecting as an MQTT client directly to the uh, broker in the platform. And now it's connected to the broker on the edge. To make the choices easier, we're gonna add a toggle widget to our portal that lets us choose between the word smooth and raw. Um, and the platform to edge topic will be the event target for the event parser of this new widget. So we'll just pick smooth or raw with the widget and the message gets sent on the topic. We'll also modify the same Python adapter to publish an acknowledgement message. And it will do this to an edge to platform topic and we will add a text widget to our portal to display this acknowledgement message. So by the end of this session, we will have added a toggle widget to our portal, and that's gonna involve a little bit of work in the event parser because the uh, event parser that comes out of the box is, is not exactly what we need. So we'll just make a, a few modifications on it. We'll also add the text widget to show our acknowledgement message. And most of our work is going to be uh, with changing the Python adapter um, to subscribe to the uh, platform to edge topic and to publish to the edge to platform topic. Okay, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. I want you guys to uh, log into platform.clearblade.com and log in. And as always, if you have your existing system built such, such that you followed all the instructions through the end of the last session, which was session eight, then feel free to continue and use that system. But if you haven't followed all the instructions, so it's incomplete, then rename your existing, existing system to something like temperature monitor underscore in progress. And you can start today with the completed system as it would have been at the end of session eight, provided as a support zip file attached to this video. So there is at least, um, three support files that will be attached to this video. One is um, the zip file, the completed system. The second is the completed Python adapter. And the third is the uh, event parser for the new toggle widget. So let me go ahead and create my system uh, by adding it from a file, browse to the file. Uh, it is it's completed system. I don't need to extract anything. I just pick it. And once it has uploaded, I will do my preliminary preparations, uh, changing the credentials of the user. So I'm going to go to users, change the credentials, change the password, pick something that you will remember, update, and never mind my pop ups here. Uh, let's go to devices, do the same thing. Click on the gear icon, settings, 
change active key. So we said we were going to make it ABC123 update. And let's go ahead and do that for device two as well, even though I'm really going to only uh, use device one uh, today. But might as well update. Now let's go to our portal and get everything ready. We're not going to uh, see anything coming coming in for a little while, but let's just get it ready. So I'm going to go and log into my portal with the user. And uh, a couple of suggestions about adding widgets to your portal. Um, here you have different breakpoints, and those are different uh, screen widths in pixels um, that this portal may need to be displayed on. And it depends on your users. What kind of devices are they viewing your portal on? Uh, so you're probably going to build multiple versions of your portal for a real system. As you add widgets, be very careful not to uh, instinctively just hit Control S to save until you're sure that uh, your portal looks the way you want it to. Because if you do save, um, there is no uh, currently no undo uh, method. A Control Z doesn't uh, take you back to how you had it before. So first, uh, make sure that the widgets are in the right place, and then use this to save. And if you uh, find that it doesn't look right, the best thing to do is to reload so you go back to the last saved version. If you do save and you didn't intend to, hopefully you're using source code control or uh, some kind of version control mechanism so you can roll back if you needed to. And worst case, you just have to fix uh, the edits that you made. Uh, and this way, I, it's something that could save you a little bit of time if you don't save what you don't need to. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create my portal for a width of 768 pixels. Uh, and that's because I'm going to uh, be using it looking like this, half uh, my monitor tiled. Um, so that's how I'm going to set it up. Uh, feel free to use a different uh, breakpoint if you'd like. Um, so I'll go ahead with that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my existing toggle uh, little narrower. Now I'll go ahead and add my second toggle. And I'll make that narrower as well. It doesn't have to be exactly the same width or anything. Now I'll also add my text widget. Okay. And now let me go ahead and move things to where I want them to be. I want the text widget to be all the way at the bottom. So I'm going to move it all the way there. And then I want this a uh, new toggle to be uh, right above that new text widget. So I'll put it right there. Okay. And I believe I have it how I want it. So now I'll be saving it. Now let's go ahead and prepare the new toggle. Mouse over it. Gear icon. Labels. The off label is going to be the word uh, raw. The on label is going to be the word smooth. And save, and now you can see that I can choose between those two. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, prepare for the parser. So the first thing I want to do now is to create the data source that will be the target of the event parser. And it's going to be a topic, so I'm going to go to uh, home here, data sources, add, message topic and um, recall that our adapter used to receive messages on device slash one slash requests. Um, if we were to use this topic now that the adapter is connected not to the broker in the platform but to the broker on the edge we would need to suffix this with underscore edge and our particular edge is named first edge. However, uh, you also recall that we could have two devices connected to the one uh, broker on that edge. And maybe we want to send the same request for smooth versus raw to both of them. So 
So then this device under uh, forward slash one doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to get rid of the one. So every device gets the same request. That's going to be the topic. That's the data source. I'm going to pick that. And when I do that, you see this message pop up. And this, this is very important. Um, to be able to use uh, topics as data sources, we need to authorize the role uh, that's logged in here to have access to message history. So let's go ahead and dismiss this. And let me show you how you do that. You go back to the console, the back end. You go to roles. Uh, that user happened to be authenticated. So let's go to authenticated and you scroll back all the way down to message history and you can, you really just need to give the role read access, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on all, save and exit, go back to the portal and pick that and apply. And now that data source uh, can be used or the topic can be used as a data source. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and create our parser. Mouse over the toggle, wrench icon, event parser. Let's pick the event target to be the new topic. Edit. Okay. You may recall that this is just a true or false, depending on whether this uh, toggle is set to true or false. Uh, that's not what we want to return to the new topic. Uh, you may also recall that you can access settings by using ctx.model.settings, uh, open, close. And then from settings, you can access on label, label settings, dot on label. And you can access off label equals settings dot off label. And then all you need to do is use this as a selector and send back either on label or off label. And now your parser for your toggle is ready, ready to use. Let's uh, set up the parser for the text uh, widget. So let's go ahead and mouse over there, branch icon, data parsers. Oh, uh, we need to add another data source. So let's go to home, data source. It's a message topic. And this one is a, an edge to platform topic. So let's call it device slash ACK slash underscore platform. Take that, apply, keep saving. Mouse over here, wrench icon, data parsers, pick the new data source. And you really don't need to change anything else. In, in fact, you already see that it's doing something. Uh, and now we are done with our portal. So I'm going to actually have it uh, ready to use. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, update our Python file. So let's go back to our uh, console because once we ed edit the Python file, there's a few things we will need to do over here. Here's our Python file. And um, first thing we're going to do is change the subscribe topic. This is how it used to be. We're going to change it to that forward slash edge underscore edge forward slash first edge. That's the name of our edge. Now let's create our ACK topic. And this is device slash ACK slash underscore platform. Okay. Now you'll recall that the subscribe topic was used when uh, we ran this on connect. So the on connect is an event handler for when the MQTT client connects. And that's when we were performing the subscription. 
and this on message is the event handler that executes when messages actually came in. And that's when we use the message, pull out the payload, uh, decode it as a string, and set that equal to this incoming request. And then down here, we've been using that incoming request to decide whether to smooth the data or not. So what we're gonna do now is when this incoming request comes in, we're going to send an acknowledgement back in the on message. So we're gonna just have add mqtt.publish and to the ACK topic. And let's send back first edge received and open single quotes close open close curly braces incoming request and that should be everything we need to do uh, to change our Python file. There may be a way I could uh, pull out the fact that the name of the edge is first edge. Uh, I'm confident there's a way I'm just not gonna uh, look for that today but um, very confident there's a way that we don't have to hard code that. Uh, let's just make sure that I got all that. Okay, all right. Now let's go ahead and uh, make the changes needed to spin up our edge. So first of all, let's go to our adapter, temperature adapter, set up, get rid of the old, import the new, there it is, update. Okay, now we're, we're gonna need to make a change to our deployment. And here's the thing to keep in mind, the way these relay topics work. So we have a client connected to a broker trying to send messages to a client connected to a different broker. So the brokers work together to figure out a way that the recipient uh, essentially gets the message as if it's from a client connected to its own broker. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. And for that reason, the uh, broker on the edge is going to kind of need to uh, replicate what the user is doing. So remember that it is the user that's using the portal and uh, interacting with these widgets that are the clients for the two topics. So that user needs to be available on the edge and uh, currently the deployment doesn't have the user. So I'm gonna go into the deployment and change so that users are synced to the edge. Save and exit, okay? And now we are uh, really ready to spin up our edge. So let's go ahead and uh, get our terminal ready, right there, and go to edges. Uh, let me mention something about versions here. Okay, so our uh, platform is being upgraded very uh, frequently because we're always adding new features, we're always doing performance improvements, and we're always finding and fixing uh, bugs and pushing patches. So when we started using our Edge, we were at version 9.5.6, but if you click on this information icon and go to about, you'll see that uh, the version of our uh, platform right now is 9.6.2. And that platform version, mirrors the version of the edge binary. This is the executable, if you will, that gets installed on the uh, gateway device and runs. Apparently, when we started, the edge binary version was 9.5.6. Now, it will get upgraded to the latest one because I'm going to act as if there is no edge here. In fact, if I was to look at what's in this um, directory, there's nothing but you may not have the luxury of just starting from scratch every time uh, with, a, with an actual system. If you have an edge that's already running and you need to upgrade it, uh, here's how you do it. You click on the gear icon, you've got this option for upgrading edge, and that way you don't have to uh, reinstall from scratch, okay? So that being said, let's go ahead and re reinstall from scratch. So I'm going to go to setup instructions, pick my target, pick my install command copy, Paste it. And then while that installs, I'll copy this, the startup command. 
Okay, and then paste that. And look for the ASCII art. And then I know that my edge is running. Now if I refresh, uh, there we have the link. Okay. Oh, by the way, you would need to be connected, obviously, uh, to be able to upgrade your edge. You'd click on this drop down, and, and I guess um, this doesn't give me the option because I'm already upgraded. As you can see, the version is 9.6.2. It used to be 9.5.6. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And the first thing I look for is users. There is my user. So the, the deployment did take effect. I go to my services, log temperatures and PTT, not running. Let me go ahead and start it. I have now one instance running. Perfect. Now let's get ready uh, to run our Python adapter. So I'm going to go back to my console and get ready with credentials. I'll go to my terminal, uh, duplicate it to get a new terminal, change to my adapters temperature adapter folder and in there I have my python file python 3 temperature adapter uh, first command line argument was the system key second one was the system secret third one was the device number fourth one was the device key uh, fifth one was the low temperature. Remember that device one was the one we had um, publishing data in uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So 70 to 100 Fahrenheit. And let's say it wants to send us 100 points. Okay. Now with all that done, I should be able to monitor my portal. Let my Python program run. And as it runs... I should see data showing up in my line chart widget. Okay, so I'm gonna let uh, a few points come in. And as I said before, these animations kind of are a little distracting, but all that's really happening is this, this whole um, uh, plot is moving to the left or uh, getting compressed to the left until there's 100 points and then it kind of starts scrolling to the left. So these, Temperatures are all over the place between 20 and 40 Celsius, which is about 70 uh, to 100 Fahrenheit, until I'm going to click this toggle. Notice here it says temperature being sent. I click on the toggle, and now you should see smooth temperatures being sent. And as we expected, we got our uh, acknowledgement. First edge received smooth. And in fact, uh, here's where you see the proof the uh, you know wild swings have kind of settled down and now if I was to click on this again smooth temperature here changes back to just temperature first edge received raw uh, the word raw doesn't matter it just it's just something other than the word smooth and now the wild swings have come back so what we have achieved is uh, this uh, these two widgets are essentially MPTT clients and they're communicating from the platform to the edge through relay topics. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you did not follow all the instructions, please do so. And if you haven't seen the other uh, videos, I encourage you to do so and build everything up to this point. And I look forward to seeing you guys at the next one.